Good evening, students. Am I audible? Can you hear me all? Okay, so yes. So last class, I think we finished alkene, right? Okay, so I think there's still more. There are some people to join. We'll wait for like a couple of more minutes and then we'll start. Yeah, so I think we are done with uh, alkane. Cold by electrolysis is the last one, yes. At the reaction of alkane, we didn't do. Achha, we did only preparation, right? Fine, fine, we'll continue with that. Acha, do you get any information like when is the last class uh, for this session? Which date? No. Okay. Fine. So Write down properties of alkane. Properties of alkane. First one, write down physical properties. physical properties physical properties you see the first one the physical state in physical state what happens the first four carbon atom c1 to c4 the first four carbon atom exist in gaseous state gaseous state carbon number if it is c5 till c17 the state will be liquid. And if the carbon atom is 18 or onwards, C18 and above, it is solid. Solid like wax, wax like solid we have. Okay. The second one, we have an exception here. That exception is neopentane. Okay, in this neopentane, if you see, the physical state of neopentane is gas. So this is an exception we have. Neopentane, the formula, I guess you all know, it is CH3, C, CH3, CH3, and CS3. Could you tell me the IOPC name of this molecule? Two to dimethyl propane. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Next, write down melting point and boiling point. 
melting point and boiling point. melting point and boiling point is directly proportional to molecular mass molecular mass right if you have isomeric alkane See, among isomeric alkane, among isomeric alkane, melting point and boiling point decreases with increase in branch. If the branching increases, then melting point, boiling point decreases. Valid for isomeric alkane. One more a term we have in this, one more a point we have into this. If you talk about melting point, melting point for even number of carbon atom, for molecule has even number of carbon atom, even number of carbon atom is more in comparison to to odd number of carbon atom this is you know valid for comparable molecular mass. Comparable means if you talk about or if you compare the melting point of butane and pentane, then butane will have slightly more melting point because it has even number of carbon atom, right? You cannot think of butane and nonane. In that case, molecular mass dominates. For next higher molecule, we can compare like this. Because, you know, the actually what happens in melting point with a better packing, melting point will be more. Like you see, if you have butane, so it is like this. Butane is this. Right. Pentane, if you see, one, two, three, four, five. Pentane is this. Right. So here in butane, we have better packing. Hence, butane the melting point is more because both methyl group is on opposite side. No, so it is kind of trans, not trans, we cannot say, but when we have trans molecule, same identical group on the opposite side, then we can have better packing in this. That's why trans, we always have more melting point than the cis one. Similar kind of thing we have here. Two methyl group, terminal methyl group are on the opposite side. So slightly more packing we have here, better packing we have here. Hence more, uh, you know, uh, what we say, hence more we have melting point. Okay. If you can have, can, if you compare pentane and hexane, see, two, three, four, five, six. Hexane, again, you see both methyl on the opposite side. Hence hexane, the melting point is more than to that of pentane. But when you compare this two, then butane, more melting point than pentane, okay, because of better packing. Done. Next slide down. 
chemical properties okay we have done just one more uh, you know slide before this you can see that later nishan okay and you can watch the video also we'll share okay yeah first reaction you write down halogenation halogenation write down halogens reacts with alkane i'll write down here halogens and mainly we'll talk about chlorine and bromine here chlorine and bromine halogens mainly chlorine and bromine reacts with alkane reacts with alkane in presence of sunlight sunlight uv light you can take sunlight uv light and in dark dark at high temperature and in dark at high temperature forms forms a mixture of a mixture of substituted product one point to write down this reaction involves free radical mechanism all these free radical mechanism we'll discuss later in um, reaction mechanism chapter okay so look at this reaction what happens in this suppose we have methane ch4 methane reacts with chlorine in presence of sunlight h nu h nu means sunlight then what happens this h combines with cl forms hcl and ch3cl this is the product we get if you have excess of chlorine then this chlorine continues to react with this molecule further it converts into ch2cl2 which further reacts with cl2 h nu ch cl3 which further converts into ccl4 and here the reaction stops that's why we say we get a mixture of substituted product all the hydrogen atom one by one it substituted by chlorine then copy <clears throat> acha n hnu means yeah it is a energy of one photon hnu light that means light yeah so in in the form of light we are providing energy 
that's why the carbon hydrogen bond breaks chlorine chlorine bond breaks and then the hydrogen chlorine forms and cs3 chlorine forms a bond Done. Copy. So remember, the reaction is free radical mechanism, and you keep that in mind that we do not have any control in this kind of reaction. Free radical reaction, we do not have any control. So whatever the products are possible, all the product forms, we cannot control this reaction. We cannot say only CS three Cl forms. We can do this, but we need to provide only one molecule of Cl two in the reaction then. if you have excess of cl2 all these products will get and hence we say we get a mixture of product okay so this we can do with uh, chlorine and bromine we can find out the chlorinated product or brominated product okay iodide we cannot get from this fluoride we cannot get from this okay so how do we get fluoride in this reaction suppose you need to form alkyl fluoride what we need to do write down direct fluorination all of you copy this direct fluorination is not possible direct fluorination is not possible direct fluorination is not possible hence in order to obtain alkyl fluoride right direct fluorination is not possible hence in order to obtain alkyl fluoride we use following reaction and the reaction is we have 2 c2h5 br which reacts with hgf2 reacts with hgf2 and forms 2 C2H5F plus HgBr2 plus HgBr2. Okay, so this is the halogen exchange reaction. From one halide, we are getting alkyl fluoride. Direct fluorine. If you add in alkane, the reaction is very explosive. We won't prefer that. okay if you want to prepare iodine iodide then what we need to do write down iodination is reversible is reversible and carried out out in presence of in presence of a strong oxidizing agent strong oxidizing agent <clears throat> so when you have alkene suppose ch4 with i2 this reaction is reversible then it forms ch3i and hi but this reaction for this reaction you have to use a, an oxidizing agent like iodic acid we can use hio3 or hno3 also we can use it is iodic acid oxidizing agent so what is the use of this the moment hi forms the oxidizing agent oxidizes hi into i2 so this reaction it continues like it continuously it removes hi by this oxidation reaction hence the reaction is forced to go in forward direction otherwise because of reversible nature it has tendency to go in backward also 
right? To eliminate this possibility to have a backward reaction, we are eliminating HI by the use of this oxidizing agent, which converts this into I2, and the hence reaction goes in forward direction always, and we'll get iodide. Correct? No, 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 not required. Only this one, uh, oxidizing agent, that's fine. Okay. Right, next slide down, the second reaction is nitration. Nitration. Write down. Alkane reacts with nitric acid. Alkane reacts with nitric acid and forms. and forms nitroalkane and forms nitroalkane. This reaction is called nitration. So in this reaction, what happens? All possibility will have here. Suppose we have a reaction CS3, CS2, CS3, and the reaction is carried out in presence of HNO3, nitric acid, nitrating agent is this at around 400 degrees Celsius. You don't have to memorize the temperature here, not required. At all possible position, you remove H and attach NO2. So we can have one of the possible product is CS3, CH2, CH2, NO2. Another one is CS3, CH2, CH3. And at the middle carbon, we have NO2. If you attach NO2 here, it is nothing but this product, but one more product is possible when you break the carbon-carbon bond, CS3NO2 and CS3CH2NO2. This is the possible product we get because we are having this te reaction temperature very high, 400 degrees Celsius, and this is good enough to break the carbon-carbon bond also. That's why carbon-carbon bond also breaks and it gives all possible nitroalkanes here. Not very important. Then. Okay, third reaction I write down. Third one is isomerization. See the reaction of alkane are very direct reaction. You just need to know the reagent and write down the product. Okay, mechanism is not important here. Uh, we won't discuss that, not required actually. Isomerization is what? Lower alkanes, uh, see what happens write down butane or butane or higher alkanes. Butane or higher alkanes when heated with when heated with AlCl3 at around 400 degrees Celsius, at around 400 degrees Celsius, 
converts into converts into stable isomers isomers by rearrangement reaction so what happens in this you see we have ch3 ch h ch2 ch3 this when heated with alcl3 at around 400 degrees celsius then this hydrogen comes over here and this methyl shift over here generally you will get chain isomers in this i know it is difficult to understand how to write down the product that's why i'm telling you you just remember chain isomers you need to write down and just memorize the reagent here when you get this question with option you can easily identify that what could be the possible product okay actually when you heat this then what happens this hydrogen jumps over this carbon and then this carbon carbon bond breaks and this carbon gets attached to this carbon you'll get this next write down combustion two more reaction we have fourth one write down combustion reaction combustion we all know it is a reaction of with oxygen alkene when reacts with any hydrocarbon for example reacts with oxygen goes under combustion reaction and forms co2 and h2 always hydrocarbon on combustion reaction gives you carbon dioxide and gives you carbon dioxide and water always you can balance this reaction x c y is here so we have y by 2 so it is x plus y by 4 the balance reaction is this reaction is always exothermic you know energy releases always in combustion reaction so always exothermic delta h is less than 0 for combustion reaction next one we have the last one that is aromatization this one also you just need to know the reagent so what happens in this suppose you have n hexane n hexane n hexane when heated with the reagent say cr2o3 with al2o3 cr2o3 al2o3 if you heat this this reagent means aromatization you need to consider six carbon atom here with six carbon atom the aromatic compound that we have is benzene this is what we get if you take n heptane i hope you all know what is aromatic compound with the same reagent obviously the aromatic compound with seven carbon atom it is benzene only you will get benzene but since we have five seven carbon atom here so along with benzene we'll have one ch3 present on this okay the name of this compound the common name is toluene if one methyl group present at benzene it is called toluene if you have n octane eight carbon atom with the same reagent so we have two possibility here one is obviously we'll have the benzene ring one possibility is you have one ch3 on the top one more ch3 over here another possibility is will have one ethyl group present on this ring ethyl benzene this two possibility here benzene ring we always get in this reaction always
dan no 10 carbon aromatic ring is not possible it may form it's not like it's not there it may form but depends again if it is aromatic then it may form how we can think of para we can have isomers of this no for aromatic compound uh, we must have at least benzene ring it's not like lower carbon atom aromatic ring is not possible we have other things for that like this carb molecule you see it is an aromatic compound but this kind of ions we won't get in this reaction so we are not talking about this even three carbon atom with this it is also an aromatic compound So ions we are not considering. You don't worry much here. That is fine. You can get the isomer of this CS three maybe here, maybe here. That's fine. In this reaction, don't think much. We just have, uh, you know, uh, this three reaction. You always get the derivative of benzene in the reaction. Other things you won't get here. Okay. So this is it for alkene. Okay. We like I said, we don't have much reactions in alkene. Uh, in alkene alkyne we have uh, more number of reactions in comparison to alkene so next write down we are going to start the next uh, second part of this chapter that is alkene heading all of you write down alkene you know alkene the general formula we have cn h2n degree of unsaturation dou is 1 okay one carbon atom at least one carbon atom is sp2 hybridized okay what are the different methods of preparation of alkene methods of preparation methods of preparation we can prepare alkene from halides okay alkyl halide we can take we can take mono halides we can take di halides also we can also prepare alkene from alkyne so first reaction you write down from alkyne from alkyne so what happens in alkyne you see suppose you have a molecule r c triple bond ch this is an alkyne on hydrogenation h2 we use a catalyst here right that is pdbaso4 palladium baso4 right it forms r c double bond c h h and h or do one thing theek hai you'll get like this the two hydrogen will get attached to these two carbon atom and one pi bond breaks okay you look at this reaction if you have r c triple bond cr dash another alkyne reacts with h2 in presence of pdbaso4 the catalyst we are using here you will get cis alkene cis is this rc double bond cr dash and both double bonded carbon atom has hydrogen attached on the same side okay so this is cis alkene we get but you see here if the same molecule if the same molecule reacts with h2 h2 in presence of na liquid nh3 the catalyst we are using sodium with 
liquid NH3, the catalyst we are using. This reaction gives transalkene, RC double bond C, R dash, H on the opposite side. This is trans. Okay, so you have to memorize this reaction. It's an important one. Now, what you have to keep in mind here that this reaction, H2 with PDBASO4, this we call it as a catalyst called Lindler's catalyst. Lindler's catalyst it is. This reaction here, it is called Birch reduction. B-I RCH, Birch reduction. So Birch reduction gives you anti-addition, trans product you get. Lindler's catalyst gives you cis addition, cis product you get. Okay. Birch reduction and Lindler's catalyst. Lindler's catalyst gives you cis alkene. Birch reduction gives you trans alkene. Then, Okay. Now, the reaction we have right down from alkyl halides, second method of preparation. Alkyl halides. Right down, alkyl halides goes under Elimination reaction I'll write down wait. Alkyl halides goes under elimination reaction. in presence of a base in presence of a base and forms alkene and forms alkene so the reaction here is Suppose we have CH3 CH2X This compound is heated with alcoholic KOH for example alcoholic KOH KOH is a base alcohol is a solvent we are using here Okay, so it forms CH2 double bond CH2. So what happens here, this H and X combines and forms this compound, alkene. Okay, copy it on this.
Yeah, so see here, uh, okay, okay, what does KOH do here? See, actually what happens, you see, we have this KOH in presence of an alcohol. It is a part of mechanism, actually. Suppose I'm using an alcohol here, C2H5OH, okay? It reacts with KOH. Reagent is this only. This mixture is the reagent, alcohol with KOH. So what happens, you see KOH is a base. It is an acid. So it forms water, first of all, and the salt. That is C2H5, O minus, and K plus. Now this behaves as a base and takes hydrogen from beta carbon. You see this carbon, which is attached with the alpha car like halogen which is attached to the carbon atom that carbon atom is alpha carbon and adjacent one is the beta carbon so what happens here the base that we have which is c2h5o minus is the base it takes this hydrogen from the beta carbon this sigma forms here pi and x goes out as a leaving group you'll get this so along with this, what you will get, you'll get C2H5OH, the alcohol plus this X is taken by K, it forms KX. This is the total reaction we have. You can take KOH, you can also take another alcohol, any OH also you can take another a uh, base, any of which also you can take. No doubt. Okay. Another example in this only, you see, CH3, CH2, I'll write down CH2 as this, CHCl, CH3. Now in this one, two different product possible because it is unsymmetrical one, KOH with alcohol. Two different product, product possible here. When this two combines, you'll get what? A pi bond here. So one possibility is CS3, CH2, CH double bond, CH2. This is one. Another possibility is when Cl takes left wala hydrogen, this one. This is also possible because two beta carbon we have, this one, this one, two beta carbon. Another product possible is CS3, CH double bond, CH, CH3. Now in this one, one product is major, other product is minor, okay? So, which alkene is the more stable one? First one or the second one? Second one, that is because of hyperconjugation, right? More alpha hydrogen, yes. So this one is major product. The one which is more stable is the major product. The one which is lesser stable is the minor product we have. Correct? So when we have the possibility like these two products to write down, we'll write down both the product. We can also conclude one thing. You see the two beta carbon we have? This one has three hydrogen. This one has two hydrogen. Or we can say this beta carbon is more substituted because we have one methyl group present over here. So in order to get the major product, what you need to keep in mind that to get the major product, we take hydrogen from the beta carbon, which is more substituted, or we can say we take hydrogen from the beta carbon, which has the lesser number of hydrogen present on it. Okay. So we have two hydrogen here. We have three hydrogen here. So from this we'll take out, we'll get this. This rule, we call it as Setjef rule. S-A-Y-T-Z-E-F-F. Setjef rule, right? 
the product according to this rule we get is called sedgef product what is sedgef rule write down here hydrogen comes out from the beta carbon hydrogen comes out from the beta carbon which is more substituted then okay <clears throat> so the rule hydrogen comes out from the beta carbon which is more substituted okay this is the monohalide reaction another one you write down third one from dihalides two halogen atom dihalides also we have of two types as you see r ch x and x this is one type of dihalides another one is r ch ch2 x here x here basic difference in the two molecule we have both are dihalides only acha beta carbon is the carbon atom which is adjacent to the alpha carbon like you see this carbon atom is attached to chlorine attached to the functional group so this is the alpha carbon and the carbon which is attached to the alpha carbon is called beta carbon so this one and this one okay right you see this two structure that we have both are dihalides only when the two halogen atom attached to the same carbon atom we call it as gem dihalides gem dihalides when two halogen atom present at the adjacent carbon atom we call it as vicinal dihalides we we'll have many reactions for this in organic chemistry must remember the name vicinal dihalides okay so write down gem dihalides gem dihalides when heated with na gem dihalides when heated with na in presence of ether in presence of ether forms higher alkene in presence of ether forms higher alkene okay again i'm repeating gem dihalides on heat when heated with na in presence of ether forms higher alkene see this reaction suppose we have r ch r ch x2 heated with 2na in fact and we'll take two molecules of this so another molecule is this it is very much similar to woods reaction actually in presence of ether so what happens in this 2x 
and this 2x takes the two sodium molecule and forms 2NAx. plus this carbon and this carbon will get attached with a double bond. Oh, just a second, one correction here. Uh, it's not Na, it's zinc actually. He also is Zn Cl2. Correct this. 2 Zn X2. Heated in presence of zinc. Right. So, similar reaction we have like we had in uh, Wurz reaction. What is the product we get into this one? 2CH3 CHCl2 with zinc Tell me the product It forms ZnCl2 and the two molecules of this combines the double bond CH3CH, double bond CH, CH3. Yes, it is for gem halides. We can also form with vicinal. I'll tell you what to do. Similar reaction we have. From vicinal dihalides, you see. It is heated with zinc dust for better surface area. We are taking finely divided zinc, zinc dust heated at 300 degrees Celsius. It forms R C H double bond C H R and Z N X two. This is the product you get. Okay, so it only forms alkene when we have adjacent uh, halogen atom present. If it is not at adjacent position, then what happens, you see? Suppose we have a compound CH2, 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 X, and X. It is not at the adjacent position, the two halogen we have. Can be different also, that's not a problem. Can be same, can be different. R group can be same, can be different. Okay, now when this, if you heat with zinc dust, then you won't get an alkene, but you'll get a cyclopropane here. This bond breaks, this bond breaks, and this two carbon atom joins, you'll get cyclopropane. It forms actually radical and then the two radical combines.
Okay. Next, write down preparation method from alcohol. Write down alcohol. At 160 degrees Celsius, forms alkene by dehydration. Dehydration is removal of water. Dehydration is removal of water, okay? So water eliminates out and forms alkene. So what happens in this reaction, you see? I'll take the simplest example. We have CH3, CH2, OH, alcohol. Okay. So when heated with H2SO4, at 160 degrees Celsius, it converts into an alkene CH2 double bond CH2. How it happens, you see. Acid gives H plus, and this lone pair on this oxygen takes this H plus, right? So it forms CH3, CH2, OH, H and positive charge over this. This we call it as protonation. Addition of H plus on alcohol, it is protonation of alcohol. Then you see what happens, very important step. This oxygen is electronegative and positive charge on oxygen is not stable at all. Oxygen wants to get stabilized. So what it does, it takes this electron pair in which one electron of itself and one electron of this carbon. It takes both electron pair and goes out as H2O. So H2O eliminates, goes out and forms CH3, CH2 and positive charge on this. And then when you heat this from the adjacent carbon, H plus comes out, leaving its electron pair behind and it forms CH2, CH2 plus H plus. And this H plus taken up by HSO4 minus and forms H2SO4 again, right? So acid is not getting consumed. The concentration of acid won't change in this reaction. First step, it gets consumed H plus, And the last step, the H plus gets released, which maintains the concentration of an acid. So basically acid is not taking part in the reaction. It won't get consumed. So we call it as acid catalyzed reaction, behaving as a catalyst, is not taking part. So acid catalyzed reaction it is. Understood? 
Now the key points of this reaction is write down the first point in this. Write down it is an acid catalyzed reaction. It is an acid catalyzed reaction. Second point involves carbocation as intermediate. Involves carbocation as intermediate. Third point, rearrangement of carbocation possible. Rearrangement of carbocation possible. Rearrangement means what? First point was it is an acid catalyzed reaction. Acid is behaving as a catalyst. So it is an acid catalyzed reaction. Okay. Suppose you have this molecule. We have CH3. CH, CS3, CH, CS3, OH. When it is heated with H2SO4, concentrated, what happens in this reaction? What is the product we get? Anyone try this? Okay, so the product here you can write is this CS3, CH, CS3, CH double bond CH2, yes, or you can also write CH3 CCH3 double bond CHCH3. Yes. Okay. Let's see how to do this reaction. First of all, what happens? I'm just discussing the mechanism here. Remember, in detail, we'll discuss this thing again in reaction mechanism. But how it happens, you see, H plus comes from the acid. Then this lone pair takes the H plus, the protonation of alcohol. So what we get? We get CH3, CCH3, H, CH, CS3, OH2 positive charge on it. So like I said, oxygen positive is not stable. So what it does, it takes this bond pair of electron and goes out as H2O. H2O plus CH3, CH, CH3, CH, CH3, CH3, and positive charge on this. Right? And then, 
you can eliminate one hydrogen from here or one hydrogen from here, you'll get this two product, right? But this is not the exact mechanism here. What happens further in this, there will be rearrangement of carbocation. Whenever carbocation forms, we always try to get the more stable carbocation if that is a red determining step. So all these things, like I said, I'm just giving you the most important part over here. Detail I'm not going. That we'll discuss in reaction mechanism. So here this carbocation forms. What are the factor here which stabilizes the carbocation? Could you tell me? Can we say hyperconjugation? Yes. How many alpha hydrogen we have here? Number of alpha hydrogen? It is four, yes, three, this one, and one, this one. Alpha carbon, the hydrogen attached with the alpha carbon is called alpha hydrogen. So C, H. One hydrogen is this, another hydrogen is this. Three plus one, four. Okay. Now imagine this. Imagine this, this hydrogen will take this electron pair and rearrange itself onto this carbon atom. Then what happens? Hydrogen took, takes both electron here, one of carbon, one of hydrogen itself. Since carbon is losing one electron, then we'll have a positive charge on this carbon atom. Right? A new carbocation we get. Can you tell me the alpha hydrogen in this carbocation? eight. So which one is more stable? Obviously the second one is more stable, right? Second one is more stable. Since second carbocation is more stable, then this carbocation automatically converts into this one. In the reaction, it will always happen. We cannot do, but the reaction never give you the final product without this step. It happens always. So in all reactions, wherever carbocation is forming as a red, in, a, in the rate determining step, we always have this arrangement possible. There are various factors which stabilizes carbocation. This is one of the factors, right? We call it as one, two, hydride shift. It is one comma two, hydride shift. Why hydride shift? Because hydride ion is shifting. Hence one hydride shift. So because of this one comma two hydride shift, we are getting more stable carbocation. Further, if it is possible, again we'll do. We'll follow this step till we'll get the most stable carb more stable carbocation. If you do not get more stable carbocation, again you can think of shifting of this hydrogen here. You can do that. And then you will check the stability of the new carbocation forms. If it is more stable than this, then that step always will also happen, will also occur. If not, then it won't occur, right? So this is the most stable carbocation we get. Now from this, either from this carbon, this hydrogen comes out or this hydrogen comes out. So finally the product would be this only, this or this. There's no change in the product. Uh, one second, one second, Aitya. Finally, the answer would be this, but the path is this. Okay, you cannot form this carbocation and eliminate hydrogen from here, and here you'll get this. After this, this will happen coincidentally in both the cases, whether you do this or not, you're getting the same product here, coincidentally. But this step always happens. Okay, just a second, Aitya, I'll come back to your doubt. Suppose you will have here methyl group present. For example, I'm taking up, yeah, suppose methyl present. Then this we call it as one, two methyl shift. Suppose you have a phenyl present. Here we have phenyl present. Then this is one comma two phenyl shift. The purpose of this kind of shifting is to get more stable carbocation in the next step, which is this one, right? So in detail, we'll talk about it in reaction mechanism but this is enough for now. Yes, now what is the doubt we have? So, but how can hydrogen take 
the electron from carbon. See, actually what happens, it doesn't happen this way. I have just, we just understand it this way. Actually, this positive charge attracts this sigma electron towards this side. And this attraction is so, uh, you know, so what we can say is so um, great that finally hydrogen comes out and attached to this carbon atom. So whenever we have adjacent uh, positive charge or vacant orbital like this, then this electron pair attracted, attracted towards this and hence this shifting happens. All these things happens in the solution. Okay, in solution this happens. I understand it is a bit difficult to digest that how it happens, like we, whenever, like whatever we want, we break the bond this way. But organic chemistry is like this only. You should take this as, okay, this is what is happening in the solution. This, this is your learning. Okay, obviously in the solution, what is happening that we cannot understand theoretically. You have to do that experiment in the lab. You have to check what product we are getting. If the product we get this, then the possibility is what? Then the possibility is that the reaction may proceed via these, these steps. How do you get to know that? I, I can talk about it one more hour if you want. Okay, this kind of shifting, we got to know about this shifting because when we draw the graph of this reaction, we get two different intermediates here like this we get. Two different intermediates we get. Okay, one is this, other one is this. So this intermediate means what? We are getting two intermediate over here. That's why this kind of shifting we can conclude. Okay, maybe the shifting is happening because carbocation is getting more stability. So there are so many research behind this kind of conclusion that we draw for a reaction. Okay, so actual thing, if you want to understand, it is a lot of thing that we need to discuss. We, this graph is not at all required, but how do we get to know the two different intermediates we have? Graphs gives us this information. This particular point that you have, it gives you the number of intermediates. This is reactant, this is product. So if you have two intermediate here, it means this kind of shifting is possible. So there are so many things I understand. It is you know, a bit difficult to understand this particular chapter. It's not about, it is tough, but this is the first chapter in which we are doing this kind of reaction. So slowly, once you, you know, practice some questions, once you read out theory books on organic chemistry, you will be understanding this, like what it is happening and how it is happening. So organic in the first case, you should take this as the, 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 you know, the story, like, okay, this is what it is going on. It is more like a story if you're studying it first time. That's why once if you finish, you'll only get 50% of it, 60, 70% of it, okay? Twice you need to finish organic chemistry before your exam, if you really want to do well in the exam. Because second time, if you do, then you will be start connecting with it. Okay, this is why this is happening. Okay, I've studied this point over there also. There also it happens this way. Okay, so always keep this in mind. In the book, whatever reaction is given, all reactions are done in the lab. It is proved that this reaction gives you this. So first we get the product and then we have the explanation of it. Then we have the mechanism of it. Then we have the steps involved in it, right? So we say, okay, this is the possible way by which the, the given product is formed. So it is actually other way. Okay, so what we can understand here that whenever carbocation forms in the rate determining step, I am using this term rate determining step. We haven't discussed it. Don't bother about it, just ignore. We have, we'll discuss this later, okay? So whenever carbocation forms, we'll get, we'll try to get more stable carbocation first by rearrangement if it happens, fine. Otherwise, we'll write down the product simply. Okay. So this is the answer we get. All of you understood this. In this too, obviously, this one is a major product because more stable alkene will write down. And this one is the minor product. Any doubt in major and minor? Any doubt in major minor product? No. Product one cannot be right. It is uh, product, one, achha, product one won't form. Yes, correct. Product one won't form. So I, I was about to do it. It is not possible in this. That's right. Product one won't form. 
what is the another product we get the another product we get here is this one is so this hydrogen will come out and other one the minor one would be this hydrogen from this carbon comes out right so it is ch2 double bond c ch3 single bond ch2 ch3 this is the minor product we get yes major product would be same okay this we call it as dehydration of alcohol why because water is getting eliminated dehydration is taking place so alcohol forms alkene through dehydration reaction okay next write down the next uh, reaction we have kolbe's synthesis write down aqueous solution of aqueous solution of sodium or potassium succinate right sodium or sorry potassium or sodium succinate s u double c i n a t e succinate is electrolyzed and forms ethene at anode and forms ethene at anode similar reaction that we did in the alkane preparation okay reaction you see we have ch2 ch2 c double bond o o h so if you write down this c double bond o o h it is succinic acid okay it is succinic acid but we have to take the salt of it okay the salt would be what we can take sodium or potassium salt of it minus k plus minus k plus it is sodium is a potassium succinate forms from succinic acid when it goes under electrolysis electrolysis we have the similar mechanism like we did in uh, alkane preparation co2 co2 forms will get two molecules of co2 ch2 double bond ch2 two molecules of co2 okay and we get h2 at cathode 2 koh at cathode so this is at cathode this is at anode it is ethene yes it is a gas c2 to c4 carbon atoms are a gas in alkene also done clear guys copy okay now the last method of preparation we have we call it as wittig reaction write down it is a method of preparation of alkene
it is the method of preparation of alkene method of preparation of alkene from carbonyl compound from carbonyl compound carbonyl compound means what aldehyde or ketone from carbonyl compound aldehyde or ketone so for this reaction we use a reagent called wittig reagent wittig reagent is what wittig reagent is triphenyl phosphorin it's a direct reaction just you need to memorize the uh phosphorin memorize the reagent in this triphenyl phosphorin is this we have p double bond c and with this phosphorus we have three phenyl group attach ph 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 and with this c we can have two alkyl group same or different we can have two hydrogen atom we can have two hydrogen atom or we can also have one alkyl group or one hydrogen atom any all three possibilities we have rh right presence of alkyl group or hydrogen at this carbon atom won't affect the product means product would be an alkene only right we can have different different name for that but product would be an alkene right this r or h won't affect the major product major product will be alkene only so what happens in this suppose i am taking the simplest one here for this reaction i am just assuming c single bond single bond h and h c s2 this is wittig reagent very simple reaction uh, obviously mechanism uh, we are not having in this so what because this reaction again it will come in carbonyl compound chapter there we can discuss so we have ph3p triphenyl group ph3p double bond ch2 this reacts with uh, an aldehyde i am taking so i am taking h c double bond or and we are heating it okay and we are heating it. now what we need to do we just focus on this double bond and this double bond this oxygen will be replaced by whatever group present here with phosphorus so oxygen would be here and ch2 would be here product would be ph3p double bond o plus we get r c h as it is double bond ch2 so this is an alkene we get okay i missed one word over here it is since we have taken ch2 over here no so it is methylene also methylene triphenyl phosphorin yes exchange of position oxygen will take the position of the group attached with this with phosphorus and this group will come over here simple we can discuss the mechanism and arrangement we have okay but that is not required again directly you can memorize this 
mechanism based question also you won't get in this reaction if you know how to write down it's fine nothing much is required then okay this is it for the preparation of alkene okay now we'll do properties of alkene physical properties first one c2 to c4 if the carbon atom from 2 to 4 the physical state is a gas okay if the carbon atom is c5 to c17 c5 to c17 it is a liquid and c18 onwards alkenes are solid okay among isomeric alkenes boiling point decreases with decreases with branching as as branching increases surface area actually decreases right which decreases the van der waals force of attraction hence boiling point decreases so it is true everywhere actually wherever the branching is there among isomeric compounds boiling point is less more branching more less less the boiling point we have already discussed it like um, melting point of cis isomer is more than is lesser than is lesser than to that of the trans isomer the reason we know better packing we have also discussed this in isomerism chapter okay better packing done okay next write down chemical properties first one we have reaction with hydrogen reaction with hydrogen this reaction we have already done in the preparation of alkene from alkene i'll write down here you will understand this what exactly the reaction is suppose we have an alkene alkene r ch double bond ch r alkyl group same or different anything can take with hydrogen in presence of a catalyst ni 
it gives r ch single bond ch r and both hydrogen will get attached from the same side alkane it forms remember this reaction we have done in preparation of alkane stereochemistry of this reaction you, you you must remember what you need to keep in mind if you have cis alkene cis alkene you are doing hydrogenation of cis alkene it gives you meso compound this you have to memorize very important information meso compound okay that means what suppose we have c double bond c we have alkyl group attached to this carbon and we have deuterium when you allow this to react with h2 in presence of nickel it forms a meso compound and we know what is meso compound we have a plane of symmetry internal compensation so both d and h are present on the same side cs3 cs3 remember meso compound So once you know this information that it forms meso compound, you will draw this structure only. So that will have a plane of symmetry uh, within the molecule, isn't it? Yes or no, guys? On the other hand, if you have trans alkene, for example, you see this. If you have trans alkene on hydrogenation. it gives you racemic mixture it gives you racemic mixture okay look at this reaction here trans alkene is this suppose i am taking this example plus h2 with ni do you know this information it forms racemic mixture how do we draw racemic mixture you see two compounds it will form one d is this side d h h opposite side cs3 cs3 plus the other one would be the mirror image of this one yes or no h d h d cs3 cs3 this information that we did just now meso compound and racemic mixture we call it as stereochemistry of this reaction acha i by mistake i have written it no problem that's not a problem you can also place this as cs3 then also it will be a meso compound you can say this could not be a product of this one if i write down r here but if you look at this uh, compound individually not about this reaction look at this compound it is a meso compound you see there is a plane of symmetry here internal compensation yes acha you are asking this question if uh, first one it won't be meso if r is not same as r ha then we can say correct definitely right if both this alkyl group are not same then obviously we don't have the mirror image then it's fine it's not a meso compound in that case yes correct
okay next you see another reaction write down halogenation reaction write down it is an electrophilic addition reaction it is an electrophilic addition reaction okay so in this one what happens you see we have a reaction rch double bond ch r same or different plus x2 in presence of a polar aprotic solvent ccl4 we are taking carbon tetrachloride it is a polar aprotic solvent polar aprotic solvent if you take it won't ionize this halogen molecule means we have a bond like this this bond won't break easily delta positive delta negative so what happens in this the pi bond breaks and the two halogen atom gets attached to this carbon atom so it forms basically vicinal dihalides vicinal dihalides correct next write down the third one reaction of reaction with hydrogen uh, hx hydrogen halide you have an alkene c double bond c reacts with hx and forms alkyl halide c single bond c x and h pi bond breaks h plus and x minus will get attached okay so in this one what happens you see suppose you have an unsymmetrical alkene i am taking this example ch3 ch double bond ch2 if this is allowed to react with hbr then this pr and this h right you should know that where this br should attach and where this h should attach the product in this reaction would be this so unsymmetrical alkene you have to be careful like whether br will attach on this carbon or this carbon how to decide we'll discuss that if it is symmetrical alkene then wherever you attach br or h it won't make any difference correct we'll discuss how to you know understand this which will attack where but this reaction you see two three points here you write down involves carbocation formation this reaction involves carbocation formation and when carbocation forms again there will be rearrangement okay reactivity order of hi is maximum then we have hbr then we have hcl and we have hf this is the reactivity order okay 
So you see here, the same reaction I'll write down. The reaction is CH3CH double bond CH2 reacts with HBr. So we have H plus and Br minus. So this pi bond shift onto this carbon so that we'll get a positive charge here and this positive charge carbocation is more stable than this one. It comes over here and then it takes this H plus. So what we get here, you see, we get here CH3CH, single bond CH2, H from HBr, and we'll get a positive charge over here. Other way, if you think, then it happens this, it forms this CH3, CH, hydrogen will get attached over here, CH2 positive charge. Which carbocation is more stable? First one or the second one? First one, right? Because of mode alpha hydrogen, first one. Hence, this carbocation won't form at all. Okay. In the first step, we always write down the more stable carbocation. Correct? Hence, this will form. Now, in the next step, what happens? The Br minus will get attached to this carbocation. If there is no, no rearrangement possible, directly it will get attached to this. If there are possibility of getting more stable carbocation by rearrangement, we'll do that first and then Br will get attached. Okay. This product we can also write down according to a rule called Markovnikov rule. Markovnikov's rule. Statement, all of you write down in this. statement write down according to this rule according to this rule the negative part of the reagent according to this rule the negative part of the reagent will get attached to will get attached to the double bonded carbon atom the double bonded carbon atom which has lesser number of hydrogen the double bonded carbon atom which has the lesser number of hydrogen Correct. With this rule, directly you can write down the answer. See, you know this rule, then what you need to do? You have this reagent, negative part of the reagent is Br minus, H plus and Br minus has to get attached. Br minus is the negative part of the reagent. This rule says what? The negative part of the reagent will get attached to the carbon atom, double bonded carbon atom, which has lesser number of hydrogen. Only one hydrogen we have here. Hence, this is the product we get. Correct? We have one more rule that is anti Markovnikov rule, AMR. It is exactly opposite of Markovnikov. I'm just telling you this, don't write this down, just keep that in mind. Anti Markovnikov rule. Okay. It is applicable in presence of this, you can write down. Anti Markovnikov rule is applicable in presence of. of peroxide of peroxide so it is exactly opposite here the negative part of the reagent applied like attached on the carbon atom which is the lesser number of hydrogen 
in uh, in anti marconic of it is ulta negative part of the reagent will attach to the carbon atom which has more number of hydrogen okay in presence of peroxide it happens it is applicable applicable only for hbr memorize this very important one applicable for hbr only this we also call it as peroxide effect or kharash effect k h a r a s c h kharash effect this is the name of the scientist actually based on his name only the effect is given remember always it is applicable for hbr only right this amr rule it is based on free radical mechanism free radical mechanism i'm not going to detail of mechanism over here this two three information you can keep in mind you can solve all question from us right again i'm repeating this point that anti markovnikov rule is not applicable for hcl or hi it is only applicable for hbr for hbr only based on these two three information you should see this suppose we have this molecule ch3ch double bond ch2 and this is allowed to react with okay we have hcl we have hbr we have hbr in presence of peroxide we have hcl in presence of peroxide the product if you see very simple one it's a markovnikov addition you can think of here the negative part of the reagent will attach to the carbon atom which is which has lesser number of hydrogen so on the middle carbon will add chlorine ch3cl same thing on the middle carbon will add bromine since there is peroxide here so it follows anti markovnikov rule kharash effect so in that case it is ulta so the carbon atom which has more number of hydrogen will take bromine and here will have hydrogen in this case it is hcl and we know in case of hcl amr rule is not applicable the product here is same as the product we get in the first reaction this is the product we have in all four markovnikov rule is for any alkyl halide okay anti markovnikov rule or peroxide effect is valid only for hbr then yeah next you see oxidation of alkene for oxidation we use different different oxidizing agent
like the first one you see we are using acidic kmno4 acidic kmno4 or hot kmno4 both serves the same purpose they are strong oxidizing agent how to write down the products very important okay suppose we have an alkene r c double bond c r h right acidic kmno4 we are taking for oxidation purpose so this double bond you need to break and you need to write down acid across this double bond so see this carbon double bond we break and write down this carbon with this carbon we'll write down acid plus we also get the same thing ho c double bond o r right so alkyne will get oxidized into acid double bond we need to break and write down the carboxylic acid same thing suppose if you have this molecule r c h double bond c h and h we have acidic kmno4 this we call it as terminal alkene terminal alkene why terminal alkene because the last carbon contains double bond here you see last carbon contains double bond here we have r so obviously this is not the last carbon so when we have terminal alkene then the terminal carbon gives you carbon dioxide co2 and h2 and this side you will get acid r c double bond o oh so you'll break this from here you'll get carbon dioxide and water and this part you will get acid very simple one you can understand this easily how to write down the product okay like i'll write down this general uh, example ch3 ch double bond ch ch3 you are doing the oxidation of it with the same reagent so what happens this bond breaks coh coh here you we'll get two molecules of ch3 co oh acetic acid okay so remember always if you have terminal alkynes terminal alkenes sorry terminal alkenes gives you carbon dioxide one side another side we have acid so acidic kmno4 gives you carboxylic acid so if you have hydrogen connected to this if the r group is not there then it would be this only hc h double bond chh in that case acidic medium you will get two molecules of co2 and two molecules of h2 correct another oxidizing agent we have alkaline kmno4 alkaline kmno4 and one more we have and osmium tetroxide oso4 osmium tetroxide you see in this osmium tetroxide the oxidation state of osmium is plus 
which is the maximum oxidation state of any element we have in the periodic table. Plus eight is the maximum oxidation state of any element. Many a times I've asked this question. Osmium shows, shows the maximum oxidation state. Both gives you similar kind of product in the reaction. Okay, it gives similar kind of product in the reaction. Okay, first we'll see KMnO4 and then we'll see osmium tetroxide. You see, KMnO4, if you are taking cis alkene, write down the way I am writing it down. Okay, exactly the same way you write down. RC double bond CR over here will have H, H. KMnO4, you see, I'll just show you one thing over here, like this. KMnO4 also dissociates as K plus and MnO4 minus. MnO4 minus the structure, if you see, it is Mn double bond O, single bond O minus, double bond O, double bond O. It is like this, MnO4 minus, okay? So what happens here, from this KMnO4, we'll get MnO4 minus, like this, O minus, double bond O, and double bond O. So this O minus attack to this carbon, this pi bond shift onto this carbon. Oh, once again. Mm, yeah, I'll write down O minus here. O minus here. And uh, here we have a double bond oh, like this. So what happens, this uh, pi will shift here and this pi will shift here. Then this will attack onto this. This pi will shift here and this pi will get attached to this. So you'll get a cyclic structure here, which is this. C single bond C, single bond C, single bond C. Then we have MN here, MN double bond O, single bond O minus. And here we have R, R, H and H will be as it is. This happens in between, intermediate is this. And then this reaction is allowed to react with OH minus basic medium with H2O. Then finally, this converts into a diol. OH, OH on the same side, H here, H here, and R. So you see the previous one, acidic KMnO4 gives you acid, but here we are getting Diol. Correct. So this is what you see. The product that you get over here, it is a meso compound, isn't it? It is a meso compound we get. So if you have cis alkene, cis alkene gives you a meso compound in this reaction with alkaline KMnO4. See, it is not a tough thing. Only thing we have so many oxidizing agent, okay? Acidic gives you something else, alkaline gives you something else. So you should know this, that alkaline gives you diol. So cis gives you meso compound with alkaline KMnO4. Similarly, if you take trans, trans gives you racemic mixture in this reaction. I'll write down the reaction in the next one. Directly I'll write down H, double bond CRH, with reagent would be what? Alkaline KMnO4, alkaline with OH minus H2O. Gives you meso compound. So meso compound means what? Both OH on the opposite side, H, H, R, R. Recipe mixture we need to write down. And the, and the uh, mirror image of this would be OH, H, H, O, H, R, R. 
So if it is trans, trans gives you resmic mixture. This is important here. Like cis gives you meso, trans gives you resmic mixture. Right, so alkaline KMnO4 we have, hence we have base over there. Osmium tetraoxide, if you take, osmium tetraoxide also gives you the same thing, but only one change, one difference we have over there. I'll just write down here. Uh, if you have cis alkene plus OSO4, osmium tetraoxide, only difference is what, like we have alkaline medium, here we have in the second step basic medium. Gives you, cis we have, gives you meso. If you have trans with OSO4, osmium tetraoxide, acidic medium, gives you resmic mixture. Exactly same, both reactions gives you the same product. The difference is the first one we have alkaline medium. Here we'll have the acidic medium. So one last reaction we have in this, we'll finish this and then we'll take a break. Done? Okay. Last reaction we have in this, write down, ozonolysis. Important reaction. All these reactions we'll have again in reaction mechanism. They will study in a different manner of all this. So in ozonolysis, what happens? We have carbon-carbon double bond, alkene, allowed to react with O3, ozone first in the first step. And in the second step, we use Zn with H plus H2O, zinc with H plus H2O. Zinc with H plus H2O we are using, very simple one. Easily you can write down the product here. What you need to do, just you break this double bond add oxygen to this, oxygen to this. So the product would be this, CO, O double bond, C. This is the product we get. In between what happens with ozone, first of all, ozonide forms. Ozonide is something like this. Ozonide is this. Then what happens, this bond, when it is allowed to react with zinc, then zinc will take this oxygen, forms ZNO, right? This bond comes over here, makes a pi. This bond comes over here, makes a pi, and this bond is taken up by this oxygen and zinc forms ZNO. Hence, we'll get along with this, we'll get this. Double bond O plus zinc oxide we get. When you take zinc, it becomes reductive ozonolysis actually. Reductive ozonolysis. Okay, alkene converts into aldehyde or keto. It gives you, it gives aldehyde, ketone, or mixture of both aldehyde or ketone. Depends upon what alkene we have, what molecule you have taken. Suppose if you take this HC double bond C, R, R, and R, right? So O3, 
then we have zn h plus h2 reagent is fine what we need to do break the double bond attach oxygen with the two carbon atom so it will be r c double bond oh plus r c double bond or aldehyde and ketone if this hydrogen you replace by aldi alkyl group you will get only ketone if both the if all these if this alkyl group you replace by hydrogen you will get aldehyde here again formaldehyde okay all alkyl group replaced by hydrogen only aldehyde we get that's why we have all possibilities we can get only aldehyde we can get only ketone or we can get a mixture of both here understood sometimes they were they also ask you the ulta question ulta question means what they'll give you an alkene on ozonolysis gives you this product what is the structure of alkene so what you need to do you need to just remove this oxygen and attach the two carbon atom with a double bond that is it so ulta also they ask sometimes okay so you see here some questions on this you see write down the product of ozonolysis in this reaction ch2 double bond ch single bond ch double bond ch2 so one more thing you must take care of when you have multiple double bond all the double bond you need to break all the double bond means what you break this double bond attach double bond o with this 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 hence the product would be h c double bond o h this is the one product another one would be h c double bond o the middle one c double bond o h the another one would be again one molecule of this only two molecules of this one molecules of this is it clear yes tell me understood this suppose we have a molecule this double bond double bond with ozonolysis reaction in this what we need to do you break this double bond break this double bond attach oxygen with all these carbon atoms so the product would be this double bond double bond o o and another product would be again the same double bond double bond o any doubt in this yes well last example write down the product in ozonolysis of benzene try this yes what is the product we get all the double bonds you need to break right you need to break this double bond you need to break this double bond you need to break this double bond you see this is c c with double bond o double bond o so we'll get three molecules of 
H C double bond O C double bond O H, isn't it? Yes. Any doubt in this? Yes, could you respond? Any doubt in this? The last one? No? Yes, today I have gone a bit fast, I know, uh, because we need to finish this today. We don't have that much time. That's why I've gone a bit fast. Yeah, which one? Uh, the, this one, this one. Uh, the last one. See, you look at this one this way, just a second. I'll just draw the bigger one. Suppose this is the benzene we have, correct? Okay, ozonolysis we are doing. We know we need to break the double bond. So you need to break this. You need to break this. You need to break this. All bonds you need to break. So. If I just write down here only, probably this you'll understand. Suppose if you break this double bond this way, you also break this double bond and this double bond you break, correct? And all these carbon atom with double bond O we need to attach, right? Like this. So one molecule is this. One molecule is this, isn't it? C double bond O, C double bond O, H and H. Like this, we have three molecules, two and three. And that is what I have written here. Is it clear? Clear? So everywhere the double bond, you need to just break the double bond and attach oxygen over there. Okay? If you have to go opposite, ulta, then remove the oxygen, attach the carbon atom with the double bond. Clear? No doubt? Yes. So this is it for alkene. We'll take a break now. We'll resume at 6.35 and we'll start alkyne. Okay? Take a break. <laughs> 